we've heard some fantastic contributions by the panel. Unfortunately, we have to break at 12 for lunch. So I'm going to ask people um, to, uh, from the floor to make short one-minute contributions. So I can probably accept five or maximum of six contributions to the floor, but you must stick to one minute. For this, uh, for the, this, uh, for this very distinguished panelist, uh, I just have one remark regarding what Caroline said in connection to what Savak and Sultana uh, contributed and said specifically when it comes to the differences between Muslim brothers, whether in Turkey, Tunisia, or in Egypt. Um, it would be maybe enlightening for us in order to see the differences, to focus on policy measures, because that's what you were saying. That's what, what were you explaining. The policy measures that were taken by these groups once in power. And I have a PhD student who's doing th exactly that in Turkey. And it's showing that the moderation seems to be more in rhetoric, but not in action. Not in action. And policy measures could be a very good indicator for that. That's basically for researchers or journalists. Next. Does the panel have any hope for a secular Britain? until the country becomes a republic, or do we need the Windsors to protect us from <laughs> Islamic <laughs> fundamentalism? Uh, thank you uh, from the panel for your uh, uh, speeches. It was very bright. <coughs> I just want to tell something that we, in uh, recent years, after in the spring, uh, Arab Spring revolutions, we witnessed very, I think, very important movements, <coughs> which was uh, mass demonstrations in Egypt against Islamists, against Ikhwan, Muslim Brotherhood. We, in Tunisia, we witnessed same movement, people against Islamists, and again, even in uh, Libya, I think they were historic movements which uh, can uh, take forward the secularist movement very many steps. And I didn't hear anything from the panel uh, to mention about these movements. I don't, uh, so I don't need to know what you think about that. Thank you. Re really inspiring talk by everyone. Uh, just one question. Is the BBC a friend or a foe in the, in the cause of secularism in the UK? I think we've got to be very aware of the structural problems for secularism in this country. Uh, for example, in, in education. The religious education in this country is about religion. We had a talk recently in my city of, of Leicester complaining about religious literacy, uh, literacy, so that was required. What we need is literacy about what it is to be a human being, humanist literature, so that our children can be brought up. Not only do we <laughs> to judge things properly. Okay, I'll leave it at that, but it goes right through. For example, just the phrase, all faiths and none. I reject be being told that I'm just none. My faith is human beings, and the more we can get through to human beings to tell them what this is, the better for all of us. We are focusing now also on the religious right, but what about the religious left? Because there are also very extremist religious people who mix that with communism or socialism, and that can give, like Hamas, a very... Uh, dangerous situation. So what is the view on that? Why so focus only on religious right? There's also religious left. After the Second World War in Turkey, we have seen Kamal Ataturk introduce the secular Islamic country in the border of Europe and Asia. But now we can see what is happening to Turkey, gradually progressing towards fundamentalism. And in that light, how the panel considered that the rest of the world, including Bangladesh, I come from that part of India, what future the, the humanity holds in the classes of this 
stranglehold of a fundamentalism, Islamic? That's my question. I have a question for Sultana and maybe for Gita also. Uh, given that Bangladesh does not have an effective opposition in the parliament now, is it not a good time to revert to the 1971 constitution again on secularism and give up the pretense of uh, religion that has come in the constitution? Thank you. I will ask the panelists each to do a summation, but you've only got one minute. So we'll <laughs> I apologize, but one minute, just choose one question and please respond. So can we start with Shafak? <laughs> okay, sure. Um, well, that this is about the right, about the right and left. I, that was exactly my point as well. I think this is beyond right and left ideologies that is being defined by uh, by Western terminology. We just use the same terminology, but we mean different things. So you're right. I'll take um, the Windsors um, and, and very rapidly the 71 Constitution because they're connected. Um, just an example of how safe we are from uh, Muslim fundamentalism uh, by uh, the, the Windsors. Prince Charles uh, has called his dear friend and spoken on a platform suggested by his dear friend, a man called Choudhury Moinuddin, who was part of a death squad, uh, a, 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 the student wing of the Damate Islami that formed a death squad called Al Badr, which killed, uh, picked up, and massacred um, uh, a lot of people doctors, lawyers, journalists, uh, university lecturers, and so on uh, during the 71 war. Um, and, uh, you know, he's one of the people who worked very closely with the uh, security services as well as I was uh, describing in my talk. Um, is there a chance to become a secular constitution again in Bangladesh? Um, Sultana will answer that. I think the important thing to remember, which people in the West forget, is that secular constitutions are the protection for religious minorities. That was a point made by Marie May and Mariam in their opening talks, but it's really important that we keep saying that because it is being demanded by the minorities in Bangladesh. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'll take the question about education because I feel very strongly about it. I agree with you totally that I don't want to be known as a non-person. I recently had to go into hospital and um, my religion, they asked me what my religion was and I said I was an atheist and they put down non and I was furious. So, um, And in terms of education, I have two children who are both teachers and they are furious with the amount of religious doctrine. They're forced to kind of shovel into kids and very little opportunity to give an opposite side. Um, I feel very strongly about education as well because I think as a lot of abuse survivors, our education were very much disrupted um, in our early eight, early years. So I do think telling children right from word one, um, the alternative, the correct way is so important. So thank you for that question. I will try to answer three questions in one minute uh, about the distinction between extreme left and extreme right. I think what we want to say by by this term is that even if the Hamas, for example, is uh, sometimes supported by so-called left because of anti-imperialism, at the moment Hamas is a movement who want to dominate women, to kill gays, it cannot be considered as a left at all. So this is a right-wing movement for sure. The variation between the Muslim brother regarding the context of their country and the secular context, yes, you, you're right, we can focus on the public policy and they all going in the same direction, they are quite common, they just going again quicker or less quicker regarding the context or in Algeria because it was the 90s and it was the beginning of the secular resistance also, uh, they were until the point of killing the other. Uh, now I can say, I think we, and it's answering the question about the Arab Springs, we can say that this amazing battle that 
probably started the Egyptian, the Algerian, the Iranian, um, we are seeing that the progress we made, because definitely today, after the Arab Spring, after killing this infer infernal circle where you have the choice only between authoritarian regime or the totalitarian movement who are claiming to be the opposition, uh, so you are choosing between liberty civil and liberty civil uh, options, today the, the mass demonstration of the Arab Spring killed that. Uh, of course, there is the risk of a military restoration in Egypt. Uh, the CC is doing all the mistakes that Nasser did with the Muslim Brothers. But still, there is something which is never going to be like it was in the 30s or in the 90s, is that there is an international connected secular opposition who can even have mass demonstration in those countries, and this is just changing everything. Well, to be very short on uh, re responding to Salil's question, uh, we don't have an effective opposition in the parliament, true, but then we have people in Bangladesh society who are constantly working against secularism with national and international support. So that's why I just give one example that recently we had the Eid festival, which was observed two, three days later than the Saudi Arabian Eid festival. And the propaganda is in Bangladesh now going on that Hasina, being a supporter of secularism, did this deliberately because the government declares the date for celebrations and festivals. Hasina did this deliberately to give Hindus the chance to actually celebrate their puja, which was just before the Eid, but which is not true because, uh, all, I mean, our practice is that there has to be a moon sighting by the uh, moon sighting committee, which, le which is led by the Islamic Foundation in Bangladesh and then only we can declare the Eid day. So that was done properly, but then the propaganda is going like that. And since uh, the po politics in Bangladesh is so defensive now and so power-centered that our league or our league's alliances are also not in a position, as I said, that they're very nervous in making any clear statement about secularism. So. Okay, I'd just like to make two, uh, add this uh, it, uh, to two comments that uh, Ernie has made. One is about the, uh, 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 the movement against uh, uh, Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and in Tunisia, also secularist movement. I think there are very uh, uh, crucial uh, steps forward against Islam and against religion rule everywhere. And I think that uh, what's happening now in those, so to speak, Islamic countries is what we expect to be in the uh, uh, front of uh, the worldwide attempt against uh, 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 religion and for the improvement of secular movement. The second, uh, uh, my, my second comment is about the point that uh, uh, our friends said about the uh, left and right, said why about religious, uh, why you are talking about religious right and not about religious left. I, I didn't get quite what he means by religious left. If we cannot call any faith uh, 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 reli religion, for example, you faith in human being. I, I, I believe in, in the goodness nature of human being. Uh, uh, that's my faith, but I'm not a religious person. I faith in science. I believe in, in Darwinism because it's truth. I believe in truth, I believe in human being. So you cannot say extremism just because you believe very strongly in something. The second thing, but I understand the religious left, and that's those religious groups that support religious right, like SWP in England, that's a religious left. Thank you. As we have heard from today's speakers, Everywhere, democracy and human rights, secularism and human rights are under attack by the religious right. But equally, everywhere, democracy, secularism and human rights are being defended by brave, heroic people, often at great personal cost. Please join me in saluting those people and our panelists. Yeah.